All right, guys. Uh, don't really know what to say about that one. Don't really know how to feel about that one. Don't really know where to go mentally after that one because it was just kind of a it was just kind of an eh sort of game where no the team didn't play terribly you can't say that they no showed you can't say that they weren't up for it you can't say that they just gave no effort and got killed but there was something very lackadaisical about it there was something very maybe it's just me maybe it's just because i'm sick and i feel very kind of just going through the motions about things right now but I could swear that's kind of how I felt about this game. I don't really know what to say about it other than the Seahawks showed up, played the game for 60 minutes, didn't really play well, but they didn't do anything obviously terrible. Well, I mean, one or two things, obviously, but overall, not anything actually, like, just just putrid. And they lose. They lose to a better team. 21 to 13 and that last touchdown that we scored was I mean not garbage time but you're you're brushing up against garbage time in that situation so I I don't know how to feel about that touchdown just like I don't know how to feel about most of this game I uh I kept waiting for the Niners to just put it on us and put the game out of reach early I kept waiting. Is I'm well when I say early, I mean like the third quarter, before well before the end of the game, and they just couldn't quite do it. And we just kind of kept hanging around there, and it seemed like maybe we had a little bit of life when Robbie Gold missed that field goal, and suddenly there we are, down one score with a few minutes left, chance to go pull out an improbable win, but not good enough. Team's not good enough, and I'm I'm just. I don't know, what, what you guys let me know in the comments how you kind of process this one, because I'm not mad, um, I'm certainly frustrated with a few aspects of this team, but I don't know, there's just something, it, it might just be because I'm sick, that, that might be what it is, I might be feeling completely differently if I wasn't just wanting to keel over and die, for reasons that have nothing to do with football, so I don't know, we showed improvement, we gave some effort, we kept it close, we gave ourselves a chance to win the game at the end, I guess, but yeah, uh, what does that all amount to in the end? A loss that really kind of, I don't want to say kills the playoff hopes, but it, it hurts. So, the good news is, let, let's start with the defense here, because the defense, they played well. Defense played well in this game. Um, the, the run defense was much better. You got to remember 55 of San Fran's rushing yards were on that last, uh, play that was effectively garbage time. The Niners were running out the clock. They busted off the 55 yard run, which I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not killing our run defense for that. That's at that point, that's whatever we have to sell out to, to stop him from getting the three yards. The uh, 52 yards he gets after the three don't matter at all. So, I, I don't care about that. When the game mattered, I thought our run defense was solid. Uh, Christian McCaffrey busted the one twenty-three yarder Other than that, we kept him hemmed up fairly well. So, run defense was not single-handedly the reason why we lost this game. And our run defense played well enough to where Brock Purdy did have to make some throws. And Brock Purdy was Brock Purdy. He had his nice moments. He had his bad moments. Um, you can see why he's such a limited player, but you can also see why he does have some positive attributes that you want from your NFL quarter, from an NFL quarterback. So I, I do kind of feel like there was an opportunity to maybe force him to do something he was uncomfortable with. Like there were several plays, especially early in the game, but throughout really where the coverage was just very soft Felt like we were just playing off receivers and giving them short completions, which you know is all the Niners are going to want to want the whole game. So I'm just, I'm looking at this defense and I'm wondering why are we playing our cornerbacks so far off? Why are we letting Brock Purdy have these easy throws? But overall, you can't say the defense was the reason why we lost this game. They gave up 14 points. 
touchdown in the first, touchdown in the third, and then the second quarter touchdown was on Travis Homer. So I, I can't I can't put that on the defense at all. And at the end of the day, you give up 14 points, you should be able to win. When your offense is almost giving more points to the other team than they are scoring for themselves, it's hard to overcome that. So the defense, it's not that they don't have problems. Don't get me wrong. The tackling is still not everything it could be. The pass rush, it has flashes throughout the game, but overall is a just a forgettable product. Not 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 surprising in a game like this, but it's not good. It it's there's just a difference when you watch the Niners defense and the way they play versus how the Seahawks play in a game like this, even though again I'm going to reiterate this. The defense did play fairly well. One guy I want to point out here is Tanner Muse. He came in for Jordan Brooks, and I thought Tanner Muse... Um, look, I know it's a small sample size, but I, I, I could have sworn he looked every bit as good, if not better, than Jordan Brooks. Tanner Muse, guy to watch. Get that guy on the field these last few games of the year. We've got three games left. It's looking like by the time we get to uh, the last two, we might kind of already be saying that winning doesn't matter that much. Let's let's just uh, let's just try to be real here for a second because uh, the way things are going, it, it it doesn't look good. So get Tanner Muse on the field and figure out if you have something there. I didn't think he was going to fit into this defense, but honestly, the way he played tonight in again a very small amount of plays. I, I kind of liked what I saw, and I want to see more of it. So, that stuff was cool. I like seeing stuff like that from unexpected places. There, there's still, there's still issues with the. Uh, I think there are still issues with just the level of intensity that this that some of these players bring. Seems to me that there is a little bit of lackadaisicalness, but not nearly as much as I saw the, uh, the previous week against Carolina. So. We can say that some things did get cleaned up in this game. So, all right, sure. So, yeah, right right off the bat, I was looking at this game. I was looking at the way it started. I was looking at the way the Niners cut down the field on their second drive from scrimmage. And I was thinking to myself, okay, this is going to be one of those weeks where I get on the YouTubes after the post game and I kill Pete Carroll and talk about how Pete Carroll sucks. I mean, he may, that may still be the case, but his uh, this is his defense, right? And his defense did their thing tonight. Now, there was a massive opportunity to flip this game, and it came in the form of a tailor-made Brock Purdy interception. And Quandre Diggs, whose calling card has been interceptions his whole Seattle career, he's got 15 of them, gets the easiest interception of his life, and it bounces off his chest. That drop leads to a massive flip and field position that leads to a Travis Homer fumble that leads to an easy 49ers touchdown. So, in a game that was ultimately decided by one score, in a game that was never completely out of reach, that sequence makes all the difference. And not being able to force a single turnover against this offense is, it's depressing, it's sad. And that is going to haunt us for a little while here, but I cannot say this defense played bad. Offense, you guys, you guys know, you guys know that over this year I've said very little negative about Shane Waldron, and... I'm not really doing that here, by the way, just because I understand the Niners have one of the best defenses in the league. The Niners have studs on their defense all the way up and down. You watch them play football. You watch pretty much any other defense play football, and it it, it doesn't even look like the same sport. They're loaded with talent. The, they're, they're motivated in a way that goes beyond most players in the NFL, it feels like, the way they swarm to the ball. Like, life is hard. Life is hard against this defense. But what one thing I'll say about this offense, and maybe the only big criticism I'm going to have of the process, 
one of two things needs to happen. Either you need to stop running screen passes or you need to run screen passes that work. Every week it seems like we're running a few screen passes and all of them look hideous. All of them look like things that you would see in a youth football league. And over and over again, they go for a loss of yards or no gain, or they almost get intercepted, or it ends up with Geno just kind of chucking the ball at the feet of his running back just so he can move on to the next play. I understand. I get the logic. I'm running a screen pass because the pass rush is killing us. I need a screen pass to get this pass rush off my back. But if you want to run screens, you need to find some screens that actually work. And this offense cannot find a screen pass that works. They can do the checkdowns. They can do the dump-offs. That's a little different. But I'm talking about, like, an actually designed screen pass. It's it's just every time you watch this offense try to run a screen pass, you, you wish you hadn't seen it. So we wasted a lot of plays tonight on screen passes. So that's the one thing I'm going to say about Waldron right now. I, I think he's doing a good job this year. I give him a lot of credit for the way he's brought this offense along. It's a lot better than what we had last year overall, but either find screen passes that work and use them, like work on them in practice, or stop running screen passes. Other than that, the the only guys on the field who have any of my ire right now really would be the interior line. You've got Gabe Jackson and Austin Blythe. I thought they both played pretty terribly today. Several plays, both of those guys, where I clearly noticed them being the reason why the play got blown up. So Gabe and Austin, I mean, it's not a surprise. We all know those guys kind of suck right now. So if I'm pointing to ire at anybody, it would probably be Gabe and Austin. But other than that, like, I'm not saying they played good, right? Like, Gino. I'm not going to say he played good, but I don't think he did that much wrong. He missed a couple of throws. not Nothing that you wouldn't expect over the course of a 60-minute football game where you kind of have to carry. I thought Ken Walker got what he could, which was not much. Hard to run when you're dealing with this mi miserable interior offensive line. And to a certain extent, by the way, I do throw Damian Lewis in there, who I think has fallen off a little bit these last few weeks. And overall is not the force in run blocking that I was hoping, but uh, mainly focused on Blythe and Jackson. I thought that the receivers played pretty good games. Lockett, Metcalf, good win. Fant had a nice game, five catches and a touchdown. Disley made a nice catch near the end there, helping keep that drive alive. Um, Cross and Lucas, they got beat a couple times. They made some mistakes. Lucas had the penalty that brought back that ridiculously good Dariq Young catch that I mean that's really unfortunate that Dariq Young has to lose a catch like that to a penalty but they're rookies that's going to happen I'm not I'm not going to get to uh I'm not going to complain too much about something like that that's going to happen when you're going up against guys like Bosa and Ebukam but um at the end of the day, I'm just kind of neutral on it all. I'm just, like, I'm not mad at them. I'm not happy with them. I'm just like, that was a game. It's like the Morbius meme, right? It's like when people say, you know, Morbius is one of the movies that I've seen. One of the movies that I've ever seen in my life. This Seahawks game was one of the Seahawks games I've ever seen in my life. There's not much to say except it was a game that I watched. And it didn't really make me feel any particularly strong way it didn't make me want these players gone it didn't make me hate anybody maybe 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 Blythe and Jackson but for the most part I'm just like we're just outclassed we're just outclassed the Niners have better players they have a better coach and they're headed to bigger and better things and this Seahawks team is in the midst of a pretty epic uh, second half of the season collapse and there, there are many different reasons why that is. Um, I'm definitely not naive enough to believe that anybody's going to be held accountable for that. And at this point, I don't... Uh, as of this moment, with this game in my rearview mirror having just transpired, I don't even know who that person should be. I mean, there are obvious candidates, right? Like, Clint Hurt just looks completely over his head. But I, I, I don't know. It, it's just... 
there was nothing in this game that really set me off in any emotional way. Okay, so 7-7. Seven seven. We really do look like we're going 7-10, and ten, by the way. I, I know that sounds extreme. I know people are going to say, oh, you don't say that. But I, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of life here. We've got a really good team next week. We've got a really good team the next week. Rams, who knows? I, I guess we can at least say that this run defense improved to the point where I look at a game like the Jets game and the Rams game and go, well, we have a chance. At the very least, we're going to make these teams work. But we needed both sides of the ball to bring it tonight, and tonight the offense just wasn't there. The offense just didn't have it. And it's too bad because, honestly, until garbage time, the run defense much improved. Uh, the the uh, the defense in general actually gave us a chance to win, and it's unfortunate that we're sitting here right now knowing that hey, the side of the ball that's been keeping their promise the whole season, they couldn't do it in maybe the most important game of the year. But uh, hey, for whatever it's worth, before the year started, I said either six or seven wins, we might be headed there in a very unexpected way. I'm not happy about it. The, uh, I think the path <clears throat> that we have taken to get here calls into question some things. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, guys. I, I'll, I'll just be straight up and say, I'm sick. I feel like garbage. Maybe that's just what it is. Maybe that's maybe it's that simple. I don't know. All right. Uh, three games left. Uh, you kind of have to win out if you want to feel good about the playoffs. Two of three gets you a chance, I guess. But uh, right now it's hard to really think about that all that much because the team just, they're not playing that well. All right, um, I'm going to get this video up and then I'm going to do a post stream stream a little later. It'll probably be just like an hour because it's late and I'm sick and I'm irritated. But uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys there. I don't know when I'll start it. I'll start it when I do, I guess. That's all I can say. And uh, yeah, hope everybody has a good evening. Come check out the stream in the very near future. And yeah, they are who we thought they were.